This is Carl at Nashville RV Detroit. I'm going to walk us through this 2024 StarCraft Superlight model number 225CK. So this is not a uh, floor plan video. It's more of a how-to video. So I'll show you some of the features and how they work. Okay. So here we are at the door side rear. First of all, there's a quick connect right here for the LP system. You can use that to attach an appliance, a grill, a griddle, whatever. If you're going to purchase one, make, just make sure you get a low pressure appliance that's uh, designed for this system. Okay. Uh, and then you have uh, some power here, obviously, a, a port for a sprayer. You have a power awning with LED strip, outside speakers. <clears throat> Your stairs fold out. So, okay, like so. So you have a pass-through storage here. You have a crank right here, right? And then you have a, a another crank. You can see it by the, your coiled sprayer there. It's uh, the end of it is a cylinder with a slot cut in it, right? Um, so that's used for your power stabilizers. Let me show you. If you get to the right spot here. Oh, I guess I was at the right spot. So if these power stabilizers ever fail, you can use that crank to crank them. So uh, you had a cylinder with a slot cut in it, so there's a shaft with a pin through it right there. That crank will fit right on here. And you can actually crank them manually if, if for some reason they fail. Um, and of course the switches are over here. The front switch controls both the front and the rear switch controls both of the rear. Now you have a power tongue jack on this. If this ever fails, you can pull this rubber plug and you can use that three quarter inch crank on it. You can actually crank this manually to get yourself out of trouble. Always, always can get hitched or unhitched. You can also use a drill with a six point three quarter inch socket, whatever you have, but the crank will work. Two LP tanks which are full, automatic change over regulator, um, deep cycle marine battery of course. This is your power cord here. Um, this is the crank I was telling you about right here. You see it's got a cylinder with a slot cut in it. Okay. So your slide room which is in right now of course. These are your, this is where you hook your dump hose up to. And then you see your valves back there. You see the gray valve there, the black valve there. The black valve is toilet water and waste. So um, if you come over here, your, your water hose always screws right on this one. If you look at this drawing here, it's for this blue valve. The blue valve is in the horizontal position, so it's telling you it's good for city water. So if you hook the hose out of there, you turn it on, uh, everything's going to work like normal. Now if you happen to be camping someplace that doesn't have city water, you can put it into the vertical position like so, and then this, this line will fill the, the, your, uh, your uh, fresh water tank, right? So uh, you can pre-fill the fresh water tank, and then you can um, uh, uh, use the onboard pump to pump the water. So there's two different options, whether you have city water or not. Almost always you'll have city water. It's only when you're boondocking or in some unusual spot you'll have to fill your tank. Um, this is your, your uh, black tank flush here. You can see that's what this sticker's for. It, it says, always open your black tank valve before you turn the water pressure on. So keep that in mind. But you hook your hose on there, you open the black tank valve, flush it, leave it open, turn on the water, and it'll spray out your black tank, clean off the sensors, that sort of thing. Uh, does a really good job. This is just campground cable through. And this is where another port for your coiled sprayer to hook up to right here, okay? This is your 30 amp hookup. Of course, that's your rear stabilizer there. Um, you can see that housing up there. That's for a, a uh, Furion backup camera kit. So it's pre-wired for that if you're ever going to get one. 
Uh, you can get one, you know, you can get them different places. We sell them here, you can get it wherever you want. It's, but it, it's pre-wired for a Furion kit, so make sure you get the right kit. And of course you have a ladder which makes it easy to inspect your roof. The manufacturer states every 60 to 90 days you should inspect your roof. So um, uh, keep that in mind, okay? That should be part of your regular maintenance. Now this is your water heater. Right now it's full of water. It, this is in camping mode now, it's ready to be used. Um, so your valves are in the correct position and uh, it has water in it. Now this works on either gas valve or electric heating element here, right? The switches are inside the trailer, so I'll show you those switches when we get inside. Um, remember, never run the water heater without water in the tank. So you always want to make sure you have water in the tank. There's your drain right there, an anode rod. And that takes an inch and sixteenth uh, six point socket, okay? So that's your water heater. Never run it without water. Okay. Alrighty, so we can come around and go inside now. So here we have your control panel. Uh, your slide out uh, is here. You can see it. We're running off battery right now, so we don't have that. Uh, we're not even plugged in. Right there. Okay, this one here is for your power awning. So never leave it out unattended if you're not going to be at the campsite roll awning in. You got your light there, you got interior lights here. Your water pump is right here. You turn it on right there. That's used to pump water out of the fresh water tank if you don't have city water. It's also used to winterize the trailer. Light your water heater on gas here. There's the fault light up there. Or run the electric heating element there. Never run it without water in the tank, of course. And then you have your batteries charged up and your tanks are empty. They graduate up in one-third increments as they go, okay? Okay, so the table, you can pull the, the, uh, the legs on it, the posts on it, and you can set the tabletop onto these cleats here and turn this into a bed if you need to. Of course, you have your TV. And this is your sound system here. There's a remote with it. And uh, this, this has AM, FM radio. It has Bluetooth, so you can stream from your phone or your tablet. It has a, a um, let's see, it has two speaker zones, A and B. A is inside the trailer, B is outside the trailer. So it has everything you need and then some. Uh, as we move down farther, this is your thermostat here. Uh, it's very simple. You turn it on and you you uh, you choose the mode basically you use the mode button you just keep scrolling through if you want heat or if you want air conditioning or fan the fan is just the air conditioner running without the compressor it just circulates air so you just choose what you want it's very simple this is your carbon monoxide LP gas detector it should always be green if it's not get it serviced so if it's not glowing green you want to uh, uh, take it in or bring it in and get it repaired or replaced whatever okay your um, keys are hanging right here on the faucet this is a GFCI keep in mind all the plugs and all the receptacles in the trailer are wired through this GFCI so if you're using another plug and it pops let's say the one outside you're going to reset it in here okay microwave works like any other microwave range hood fan and light okay we have your, I don't know if the gas is turned out right now, so I'll just talk you through this. But, um, let's see. Yeah, I, I can hear the gas, so we'll, we'll have to see. The tanks were just hooked up, so I'm not sure if that's gas I'm hearing or not. I'll give it a few, few clicks to, to go ahead and get the air out of the line, just in case that's what it is. Yeah, that's all it was. So once you get the air out of the line after from hooking up a new tank, 
uh, it'll it'll light the first time you you click it next from now on until you change the tank again. Then you got to work that air out. So you got three burners and three knobs. This one here is for the oven. The oven uh, is a little different. It has a a um, let me get this out of here. It has a um, uh, pilot light all the way at the back back there. So you can see it spark back there. I think so. You, you put it in the, the position of the flame, then you depress it. You keep it depressed. You light it. After you see the pilot light light, you still hold it for another 10 or 15 seconds to heat up the thermocouple. Then you go to operating temperature, of course. When you shut it off, the flame goes out, but so does the pilot light. So you have to relight the pilot light each time you use the oven. You got not, not the, lob, uh, the, uh, the lights for the controls, and then you have an oven light down here. Okay. Always travel with this in the down position, otherwise it'll break. Okay, your refrigerator is 12 volt DC. So this is it right here. Runs at 12 volts. So keep that in mind. Um, it also opens both ways. So you can, you can choose which way you want to open it. You have some theater seats. You know, with uh, here's your power uh, back and and footrest, and you got a, a, a charger there. The uh, there's a little bit of storage under here, as you can see there, look like sheets maybe, but something they have to do with trimming it. Uh, now this is a, this is an interesting thing because it says 5G on it, but but most people would if they got this kit they would use it for the public Wi-Fi booster. Basically, if you scan this, it'll take you to a web page and tell you that this is pre-wired for this kit, which consists of an antenna on the roof for for Wi-Fi, and then a router box will fit right here. So basically, you'll have better public Wi-Fi. It's a it's a good booster, and you'll basically all you have to do is hook the this this booster up to the the let's say the campground Wi-Fi. All your your family's phones and tablets, whatever, will hook up to this automatically because it'll be in there with the password. So it gives you really good Wi-Fi. You can also get a 5G thing. Which I'm sure it has a monthly plan, that sort of thing. But most people seem to go for the public Wi-Fi if, if they're Family uses a lot of it, and I guess I guess what family doesn't. So, this is emergency window here. You just push that all the way through, then you grab a hold of the red tab and pull the screen out for an emergency. Okay. TV hookups here. This has a. You can see there's a light on there. I can shut it off, but you always want that green light to be on. That's turning on your dig digital antenna. Okay. Now, I think I walked past something here that I was supposed to tell you about. Let me look. Maybe. Oh, yeah, I did. So, this is your solar controller, right? So, this is your, um, yeah, I suppose you can see that there. This gives, tells you what's happening with the DC current in your system. Only 12 volt DC, not no AC. And it tells you how, mu how many amps you're gaining from the sun. So, we'll go through it. I'll just go to the important page. It's, that's 84 Fahrenheit right now in here. 100 or 13.0 volts DC is telling us. Let it come around again. Here we go. 13.4 volts DC, and then 4.1 amps you're gaining. So four point right now with the the uh, weather as it is and the time of year and the position we're in, we're gaining 14.1 amps from the sun and storing it in the battery. So you can read more about it, and you can also go to their website if you want, because they got a really good website uh, with a lot of information on it. Go, go, go power, I'm talking about. But you can see it, it basically tells you everything you need to know about the solar and the uh, the DC power. So this is a 30 amp um, solar controller, and it's also a charge controller. Okay, you have another kill here. Okay, all righty. So. There's also a, a um, let's see if I can find a thing over here. I walked past it. This is your your um, uh, your power converter right here. So first it says it auto, auto detects what kind of battery you have. If you ever changed batteries, and let's say you wanted to put lithium battery on the front, at that solar controller you'll have to read the directions. It'll tell you how to set the solar controller for a lithium, lithium battery. This, this device you don't have to right here. It does it automatically. So what you have is a control center, a distribution center for AC power right here, just like you'd have at home. you got 110 AC uh, circuit breakers here, and they're all labeled. 
Then the power is converted to 12 volt DC over here. So you got 12 volt fuses and, and two breakers and they're labeled, right? So it converts AC to DC power. Um, everything that can run on a DC power in a trailer does. They only use AC when they have no alternative, okay? Um, so this converts AC to DC, plus it's a battery tender, so it'll sense how much energy your battery up on the tongue has and needs, and it'll, as long as you're plugged into shore power, it'll send as many amps necessary to keep your battery charged. When you're pulling down the road, your tow vehicle will be charging your battery, and then your solar panel will charge it as it can, depending on the conditions outside, okay? So three ways to charge your battery. And this is the, the uh, um, power converter, okay? So that about covers it now. Down in this drawer you have your packet, which has all the, uh, the literature and all your different devices. Uh, so you can read up that way. You can also go to, to um, uh, manufacturers' websites and look at their product videos, that sort of thing, if you want to le learn more also. But we covered most of it. And when you come to pick up, we can go through whatever you need to go through, okay? Thank you very much.